I'm just getting ready. It's the end of the day, actually. Um, it's kind of evening time. And I'm getting ready, uh, donning my classy cow bib here to protect my, uh, this is uh, just a little fleece. But I'm gonna whip together a crock pot um, dump recipe, if you will, that's gonna go low and slow overnight while I, um, while I incubate. <laughs> Um, and I wanted to share it with you guys today. Um, so basically what this is, is a recipe that I actually enjoy eating in the morning for breakfast. I know that sounds odd. Um, and then I like it because it cooks overnight in the crock pot. And then um, not only do I have it for breakfast, but I can also dump a serving of it into a meal prep container once it's cool and I take it to lunch. But I also like it because, you know, not only it cooks overnight low and slow, so it's ready and I don't have to have any brain power to think about preparing breakfast in the morning. It saves me time. And I also like it because then I, I take a serving of it with me. Uh, you know, I have it for lunch, basically. So um, this is, it sounds a little strange, but it is a recipe for a breakfast it's a breakfast bean recipe, okay? And I invented, I, I kind of came up with this. I was sort of inspired by um, those um, Asian, a lot of Asian desserts are like red bean focused or have beans and fruit and sweets. Um, I'm not entirely sure what is in those. I'm, I'm sure there are many recipes online, but I was kind of inspired by that. And it's just kind of something that I've been modifying along the way and I'm really excited to share it with you. It <clears throat> is uh, something that I, I actually think many people may be a little nervous to try, but once you try it, I think you'll find that you like it. All right, and so as I said, the recipe um, is performed in my uh, crock pot here. This is just Proctor's Proctor Silex, I guess. I used to call him Proctor Silex because it sounds like a gangster name. And I'm kind of into, into that thug life in the kitchen, if you will. Anyways, moving right along, you're gonna need, I made these, uh, these are black beans that I made from dry, um, essentially a cup of dried beans uh, just cooked on the stove. Uh, you could use one 15 ounce can of, of black beans, or like I said, any bean of your choosing. But I just am in the habit of making beans from from dry so I don't even bother with the cans anymore okay and then I'm also going to use these are fresh cranberries that I just have been storing in my freezer um, it's about I don't know a cup cup and a half give or take of cranberries you could use really any berry that you want these don't have to be frozen they could be canned um, I've also done this with dark cherries and it is equally delicious um, then I'm also going to use one sweet potato here that um, is going to go in, um, a knob of ginger for the spice, some allspice, some cloves, and a cinnamon stick. These are the Rodel cinnamon sticks that I grabbed from Costco. They get these in like once a year right before the holiday time and I swear they sell out and then they're gone and that is it. But when they come to Costco it is such a fantastic deal because ordinarily these are really pricey and um, <laughs> I, I believe this Rodel cinnamon, these Rodel cinnamon sticks come from I want to say Fort Collins, Colorado if I remember correctly. Um, let's see. Yep, Fort Collins, home of the CSU Rams. Uh, so they also have some uh, good breweries there and a green chili flavored uh, beer if you're you know, so inclined to imbibe in microbrew beers. Um, and then moving right along here, we have, um, these are kind of not necessary, but um, I really enjoy adding them. This is the Navitas Organics Lacuma Powder. Guys, I am really a fan of this Lacuma Powder. Here, let me just hold it up for you. Lacuma, I guess, I mean, it says it's a superfood, but whatever, that, that's kind of a marketing gimmick right there. That's kind of like anti-aging of the food world, right? Superfood, okay whatever this tastes good that's all I can say apparently in um, what did I read on the back here in South America they make ice cream out of this and I can see why it kind of has a sweet caramely taste this is what the lacuma fruit I guess looks like um, I would love to get my hands on one of these and try them sometime but I don't think they are locally grown uh, well Houston is pretty good at uh, growing um, exotic fruits by virtue of the climate anyways um, I got this on iHerb uh, it's the Navitas brand it's pretty good I have to say I prefer the um, the one that I got from the Moon Juice shop a little bit more, but you know why? I think they the Moon Juice shop may add some stevia to it, whereas this does not have stevia, so it's a little less 
a little less caramely tasting somehow. Um, but it's pretty good, and so I'm going to be using about a tablespoon of this. I will list all the ingredients down below for you guys um, and, and the measurements as well. And then also from iHerb, I'm using this dairy-free, gluten-free coconut milk powder you guys have seen me use before from a native forest. Um, all this is is essentially coconut milk um, in a powder form. I love this stuff. I use it in curry soups. You guys have asked for some recipes at utilizing this since I always buy it from iHerb. And um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it in this. But if you don't have this, you can use coconut milk. You can use uh, non-dairy milk, whatever you want. I just kind of like using the powder because it doesn't dilute out uh, the the breakfast bean fruity porridge that I'm going to be making. That's what we can call this. I, it doesn't have a name. Maybe by the time I get to editing and coming up with the thumbnail, there'll be some jazzy title that will compel you to watch the video. But at this juncture, I've just been calling this, um, you know, bean, bean, breakfast beans. There you go. All right. And then, ugh, guys, back to iHerb. I got this plantation blackstrap unsulfured molasses from iHerb uh, pre-holiday season, and I employed it in my um, in my pioneer gingerbread recipe that um, is basically like like cocaine of the uh, vegan desserts, if you will. I I love that stuff, um, and I use the blackstrap molasses in that recipe. If you're interested, I'll list the recipe video down below. But anyways, um, I am still using it and love this stuff. I am so excited to be using it because I learned uh, just in reading the um, ingredients here that apparently one tablespoon of this provides 20% of your daily recommended calcium and iron intake. The plantation is the good stuff, I have to say. Then I'm also going to be using um, one cup of pineapple juice and half a cup of pineapple chunks. I'm using canned because um, that's what I have, but you could use fresh, you could get a pineapple and chop it up and all of those things. We know how unwieldy I am with a knife, and I am working on my knife skills, but I was not going to, to go down that route. So I got uh, just a good old, uh, got somebody to chop it for me and put it in a can for me so it would be ready when I needed it, and thank you, Kroger. All right, I think I mentioned the cloves and the allspice already, so that is everything. But you guys, speaking of my nice unwieldiness, okay, just first step, I'm gonna peel this sweet potato while I chit chat with you guys. But speaking of my knife unwieldiness, you guys, I have to, to give a shout out to this, I have to give a shout out to this book that I got at the library this weekend. If you are, or struggling with knives as I am. I mean, it's odd because, you know, I have training and knowledge about skin surgery and, and how to, to cut out skin tumors, but, you know, a chef's knife is kind of puzzling, let alone paring knives and everything. Um, this is a fantastic book that I got at the library, Knife Skills Illustrated, a user's manual by Peter Hertzman. I'll list it down below for you guys if you're interested, but you can probably get it at your library too. This is this is like a this is like a um, a compendium, if you will, to the joy of cooking or to the Julia Child's one. Does Julia Child is Julia Child illustrated? I'm not sure, but Joy of Cooking is illustrated, and I learned so so much from studying the Joy of Cooking. It's one of my favorite cookbooks, recipe books. Um, I no longer have it here, uh, but I learned a lot from that. Likewise, the Fanny Farmer cookbook book. I would say this is a compendium to those, and if you are a novice cook or you know interested at all in cookbooks or you know learning to cook, this is something to at least pick up at your library and give a glance. It is really, really, really comprehensive, easy to follow, excellent, excellent information. I mean, I am learning so, so much. So first up, I'm just peeling my sweet potato onto a tea towel here. The reason I'm peeling it is because I, um, sometimes the peel just kind of changes the color of things in um, recipes like this. So I'm really just peeling it for visual purposes so it's prettier for you guys. Um, but I'm peeling it onto a tea towel here just with my vegetable peeler here. So far, I haven't hurt myself with this. I'm just peeling it onto a uh, tea towel here with a vegetable peeler. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have a philosophy when it comes to food. Leave no veg behind. I'm kind of a zero waste person. I know that's really popular now on the interwebs, but 
I cannot stand to see food go to waste. So I saved this, I know it sounds odd, but I put it into uh, a pot and uh, you know add other scraps from veggies and let it cook low and slow and it turns into basically vegetable broth so no mineral it goes unutilized no flavor goes wasted in vain and yeah all right so i've just cubed up my sweet potato here and now i'm going to peel my ginger I learn best by, by, by saying things and um, by writing them down. Oh, but you guys, speaking of new skills that I'm acquiring, um, update on the um, sprouting. They are coming along. Today is day three and look how cute they are here. I don't know if you can see. They are coming along. I, you saw me this morning um, rinsing them and draining them. Um, so yeah, this is pretty uh, pretty easy too. This is another one of those, those side jobs you can do, kind of like this crock pot meal. This is the first time I've ever done it. So if it, if it looks as successful as it's going, maybe I can uh, come up with some recipes for you guys using sprouts. So I've just kind of diced up my ginger and my sweet potato here. Again, that's kind of the most labor intensive thing. And then from here on out, we're gonna just kind of dump along, okay? so. I know a lot of people don't like beans, um, but I do recommend giving this a try. Comment below, do you like beans? Because um, I sure do, I eat them multiple times a day. Um, so first up, I'm just gonna dump the beans into my crock pot here, real easy. And I'm gonna add a cinnamon stick. I just love these, they smell so good. And it fits perfectly in there. And I'm also gonna add my, it's about three quarter. it's about a cup of pineapple. Measurements don't have to be exact. My cranberries. The order in which you add these things does not matter. And now I'm gonna just add in the rest of my lacuma powder here. Use that up. Decluttering my pantry and and I'm gonna add the coconut milk powder, about two tablespoons. Then the cloves. This recipe smells really nice too, so when you wake up in the morning, you don't hate life immediately. Whoever has that feeling like, oh, the, the, the dreads, of, oh gosh, I have to go to work. Well, if you wake up to the smell of this, it'll kind of ease that transition for you, I promise. The best part of waking up is tropical bean cooked down in your cup. Okay, I'm putting the pineapple juice in. And I'm also gonna add about half a cup of water too. And now I'm gonna add mm, about two, tables, two to three tablespoons, depending on your taste preference of the black strap. That smells so good. But you really can add any fruit to this, honestly, and it will, it will be quite delicious. All right, we, uh, I just put Proctor and Silly on to, uh, to low, but I'm gonna give everything just a little stir. I don't know. I don't think that's necessary. Um, to be honest with you. I note about the lacuma though, I've done this with and without the lacuma. And uh, the lacuma does impart a, a little bit of something extra, a little bit of a, you know, kind of a caramely taste, but it's not necessary. And really this um, recipe you can use with just about any fruit that you want um, or whatever kind of you have. It's a good just sort of dump recipe. All right, and so as odd as that looks, everybody's just gonna incubate there overnight while I rest away, so nighty night. All right, so first thing in the morning here, and the fruity beans have cooked down. That's what they look like, so I'm gonna just let these cool here. I've turned my crock pot off, and I guess they were on low overnight for approximately I don't know, six hours, give or take. Um, yeah, um, so I'm just gonna let these cool and dish them up for breakfast. <laughs> 